The Pentagon is planning for war with China and Russia, can it handle both? The Pentagon is in the opening stages of redesigning the force around the challenges of Russia and China, the departments know. Two uniformed officials said Tuesday, while warning that America may not be able to afford preparing for two unique problems since. The recent national defense strategy identified great power competitors as the major challenge facing the Pentagon, but General Paul Selva, vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, noted that the plans required to counter each nation are naturally in tension with one another for resources. Here's why they will be in competition with each other, they are not the same, Selva explained during an event hosted by the Defense Riders Group. There are two unique competitions that we have to deal with, and the elements are overlapping but not the same. The primary way that tension plays out depends on who would be involved in the fight. Any fight with China, if it were to come to blows, would be a largely maritime and air fight, Selva said. It doesn't mean the Army and the Marine Corps don't have a place. But when you think about how a potential conflict with China would evolve, it very likely involves a substantial contribution from the Naval and Air Forces, and the Army and Marine Corps would be supporting elements in that fight. In contrast, the Russia global problem set is largely an air and ground fight. Supported by elements of our maritime component, because you can't get to Russia, you can't get to Europe in any large measure without transiting the North Atlantic, he said. Which means there's going to be a maritime fight to get things to the continent, but the fight itself as it evolves is likely to be an air and ground fight. Selva noted that in the national defense strategy, Russia is identified as a global challenge, a deliberate move by the planners part to try and move away from the idea that Russia is primarily a challenge for Europe to deal with. Of course, there are other threats to the U.S. besides Russia and China. In recent strategy documents, the Pentagon narrowed its focus to what it calls the four plus one threats, Russia, China, North Korea, Iran and terrorism. North Korea is the easier to plan for, Selva noted, as Pyongyang derives almost all of its military capabilities from buying hardware from either Russia or China, which means planning for the two peer competitors covers the rogue nuclear state. Iran, however, is more complicated, Selva said, because the geography in Iran is so compellingly different that we will probably develop some capabilities, I can't tell you what they are at this instant for Iran that are decidedly different than for Russia or China. Affordability. As a result of the focus on great power competition, Selva is working to build out a global campaign plan for both Russia and China, looking across the breadth of the U.S. military before assigning a combatant commander as the coordinating authority for management of the plan, in case a conflict arises. But figuring out which is the likeliest scenario and how to invest accordingly are major challenges being worked out inside the Pentagon. Selva indicated that those challenges will be part of the upcoming national military strategy, expected to be completed before the end of the year. But the question of having enough funding to prepare for both is clearly on Selva's mind. If it's not affordable, then we will express the risk to the secretary, to the president and to the American people, he said. Then we have to go to the secretary and president and say, we are assuming risk on behalf of the American people because we can't do this set of tasks. We can either appropriate the funds to get those tasks done, or we can articulate the risk. Andrew Hunter, an analyst with the Center for Strategic and International Studies, agrees that the Pentagon needs to think of China and Russia as separate threats. But he notes there are areas of common investment for both challenges. In both instances there is a premium on having access to instantaneous situational awareness and ability to find people on the battlefield, and be able to do the command and control to strike in very tight time frames, Hunter said, adding that broad spectrum C4ISR, command, control, communications, computers, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities, is an area in which the Pentagon is routinely investing. Hunter also warns not to expect the Chinese or Russians in a shooting war to play fair and try to match the Pentagon one-on-one. -on -one. Are they going to try and do a straight-up assault on the U.S. Air Force? My guess would be they probably won't do that because that's probably a losing proposition for them and they're probably too smart of that, Hunter said. My guess is they will find a way to come at us that, at least, it won't be something where our advantage is so overwhelming that it becomes a farce.
senior cleric says Iran will target Israel and other U.S. allies if Trump attacks. Comma, a senior Iranian cleric warned the United States on Wednesday that if it attacks Iran, its allies in the region including Israel would be targeted. Comma, experts see heightened attacks on U.S. interests in the region and intensified interference in broader Middle Eastern conflicts as a likely avenue of retaliation for Tehran. Comma, Iran's engagement in Syria is of particular concern to U.S. ally Israel which sees the country's attempt at gaining a foothold on its border as an existential threat. A senior Iranian cleric warned the United States Wednesday that if it attacks Iran, its allies in the region including Israel would be targeted, according to Reuters. Ahmed Khatami also told worshippers attending Eid prayers in Tehran that President Donald Trump's offer for direct talks with Iranian leaders was unacceptable. Americans say you should accept what we say in the talks. So this is not negotiation, but dictatorship. The Islamic Republic and the Iranian nation would stand up against dictatorship, Khatami was quoted as saying by Mizan News Agency. Khatami, who is also a member of Iran's Council of Experts, which is tasked with designating and dismissing the country's supreme leader, is known for his hardline positions on a number of issues. He previously supported the call for a death sentence for author Salman Rushdie, denounced student protesters who partook in Iran's 2009 election protests as enemies of God, and in 2006 asked Pope Benedict V to fall on his knees in front of a senior Muslim cleric and try to understand Islam. For a senior Iranian cleric, his comments are not particularly surprising. After imposing wide-ranging sanctions on Tehran following withdrawal from the 2015 Iran nuclear deal, which lifted economic restrictions on the country in exchange for curbs on its nuclear program, Trump has offered talks with Iran's leadership without preconditions. Tehran has so far rejected the idea. Iran and Trump. Iran has long been a target of Trump's animus, particularly over its involvement in regional affairs across Lebanon, Syria, Yemen and Iraq as well as its continued ballistic missile testing, in violation of UN resolutions. The nuclear deal, However, signed along with Russia, China and EU member states, appeared to be working, the International Atomic Energy Association repeatedly verified Iran's compliance. Experts see heightened attacks on U.S. interests in the region and intensified interference in broader Middle Eastern conflicts as a likely avenue of retaliation for Tehran. Its Quds Force, the external wing of Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps IRGC, is an active presence in Syria and provides support to proxies in Lebanon, Iraq, and to a growing or lesser extent, Yemen and Afghanistan. Iran's engagement in Syria is of particular concern to U.S. ally Israel, which sees the country's attempt at gaining a foothold on its border as an existential threat. Israeli officials believe any territory held by Iranian forces close to the border will serve as bases from which Shia proxies like Hezbollah can launch attacks against it. Israel on guard. As a result, Israeli forces have already carried out several airstrikes over parts of Syria, killing a number of Iranian and Syrian military and paramilitary personnel. Some of the strikes were in response to Iranian armed drones penetrating Israeli airspace. Despite threats, Iran has so far not struck back directly at Israel, likely due to its disinclination to get into an all-out war with the region's most elite military. Russia, the primary backer of Syrian President Bashar Assad along with Iran, has offered Israel a buffer zone of 100 kilometers from its border in which Iranian forces could not operate. Jerusalem has so far rejected the idea as not nearly substantial enough for its security considerations. Iran is in the midst of a currency crisis brought on by Washington's sanctions and years of economic mismanagement and corruption on the part of the regime. As inflation soars and Iranians hoard goods and gold, protests cropping up around the country testify to the frustration and anger of ordinary Iranians, many of whom take issue with their country's excessive spending on foreign campaigns. The UN estimates that Tehran has spent $6 billion per year to prop up the Syrian regime alone. Still, the protests aren't likely to pose a serious threat to the regime owing to their sporadic and disorganized nature and to the powerful repressive capacity of the Iranian government. Some Trump administration officials, particularly National Security Advisor John Bolton and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, have voiced their support for the protests and their potential to spur regime change.
While this may be a goal of some in the White House, whether that takes a military form is so far unlikely, experts say. Bolton repeatedly called for bombing Iran prior to his appointment. Officials at the Pentagon, meanwhile, have been more guarded. Secretary of Defense James Mattis is said to be one of the few top administration members holding back an attack on Iran. While very critical of what he terms the country's maligned influence and threats to U.S. interests, he is also aware of the stratospheric cost a military conflict with Iran would incur, favoring economic and diplomatic pressure. Still, he has made clear that no option is off the table. We maintain military options because of Iran's bellicose statements and threats, Mattis said during a Senate testimony in May. And those plans remain operant. Comoroiters contributed to this article.